welcome to Cooking with Debs and Sophia. And today we are making a very easy recipe that might be something that had scared you in the past because it's lots of people get scared by this, but it's really not scary. We are making some jam. However, we are making jam with a difference. We are not making jars and jars and jars of jam. We are using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight strawberries which have been sat in my fridge for too long. The kids don't want to eat them. I've got half a lemon that is looking, to be honest, a little bit sad. And some sugar that's in a jar that says caster sugar, but it's a complete lie because it's just granulated sugar. This is your zero waste jam. This is jam when you've got some fruit that's got a bit tired and you're thinking, I don't know what to do with that. I don't want to throw it away. Um, you've got fed up of eating crumble for the hundredth time in the week. Maybe that's just us with the rhubarb. Um, so I'm just going to chop these strawberries up. Sorry, so if I could have got you to do this. Could you squeeze the lemon for me? We'll see how much lemon we get out of that half a lemon. Um, we can always add a little bit of our trusty lemon in a thing that isn't really zero waste, but It's a very juicy lemon. It is, oh excellent. Okay, last thing I need to do, actually, I can do it straight here in the pan. Really, really easy, don't need to mess up anything else. So I'm gonna weigh how many grams of strawberries I've got. I've got 153. Now, for ease sake, I'm gonna just say that's 150. I'm gonna zero the scale, and you can pour in 150 grams of sugar. So is that one zero? So one five zero, yeah? Right, sometimes we work in ounces, sometimes we work in grams, so she was just checking what the, script, the scale was gonna read out. Okay, keep going. So the reason we put the lemon juice is that it helps to set the jam. If you don't have it, it's fine. You can make it without it. You just may end up with a slightly runnier jam. Or you can also add a bit of apple. Apple is really good um, for it because it contains a lot of pectin. So that helps jam to set. So when I made rhubarb jam for the first time, it was really runny. So the second batch, I made rhubarb and apple jam and that was perfect. So we've got the strawberries, an equal weight of sugar, and we've got lemon juice. I'm gonna to go to the tap and just get a little splash of water and then we'll go over to the hob. Okay, so I've got it on the heat and I'm just gonna, every so often just keep stirring it. We want to dissolve the sugar. So as it heats up, the sugar will dissolve into the liquid and you won't be able to feel any more grainy bits anymore. If I was making a big batch of jam, what I would do at the moment is I would put the oven on to about 100. I would wash my jars in hot soapy water. I would carefully dry the lids with a clean tea towel and the jars would go in the oven for at least 10 minutes. Quite often it ends up being like 20, half an hour. Um, but that sterilizes them and means that there aren't any germs in there because we're just making a little batch today. Um, we'll probably just put it in a little pot and it'll be gone within a couple of days. Turn the heat down slightly. And just set it, just stir it every so often and let it simmer away. Um, you often get this froth on the top of jam and what you can do is add just a little bit of butter and the fat sort of disperses the foam. But if you want to do that, I'd, I'd do it at the end of the cooking because sometimes the foam will just disperse itself. Um, now this is a bit of a weird one, but as you're cooking, you should be able to feel that as you stir it, the, the mixture's getting thicker. And when it's got thicker and um, it's, it's like decreased in size a bit, the amount of it that there is has lessened. 
I'm really bad at describing this. Um, you'll be able to test to see whether you think it's ready. Okay, I'm gonna be on this with you. I stepped away from the jam for a little while and it did start to catch on the bottom of the saucepan. So I've tipped it into another saucepan. But just so you know, it happens to the best of us. Um, so you can see that the jam has got thicker and this is a cold saucer from the fridge. And I'm just gonna take a little spoonful and tip it onto the cold saucer. And then let it cool a bit. You can put it back in the fridge, but actually I don't even need to. When you push it, you can see that this isn't quite ready. When it's ready, there will be like a skin on the top of the jam. And if you push it with your finger, it will wrinkle. So I'm just gonna give this probably one more minute because it's such a small amount of jam. And I won't bother testing again, but you can test as many times as you need to. This, this where it is now, that would be a sort of runny set jam. I'll just give it one more minute and then I'm going to tip it into my jar. Sometimes I will actually ladle it into a measuring jug and then pour from the measuring jug because liquid jam is very hot and you really do need to be careful. That's it, just pop the lid on and then this jam will be perfect with our scones recipe. I can't remember if we've made a plain scone recipe, I know we made a cheese one which probably you wouldn't want to use strawberry jam with, um, but with some plain scones or in our um, flapjack jam sandwich recipe as well. Okay, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon.